Hey everyone, uh, one of the videos you guys request of me most is what I use for cellular connectivity here in my trailer. So I know there's a lot of popular options out there for getting internet when you're away from a land connection like a cable modem or fiber or whatever. And there's good things and bad things about a lot of different ones. So which one did I actually land on for the trailer? So in my case, my primary device is this MoFi Network 4500. So this is a Canadian company. It's a cellular modem. So you put a SIM card in there on the side, and then you got your cellular antennas, and then you can actually get an Ethernet connection out. So you can run that to whatever you want. So you can run that into another router, or it actually has a router of its own built right in. Uh, but it's pretty cool. It's like uh, you actually get pretty high speed, pretty reliable internet on the move. So. You know, for those of us who are actually doing live streams, that's kind of important. Like, we need to be able to guarantee that we're going to be able to get that video out to the Internet without, without any kind of interruption. And some of the venues that we work in maybe have unreliable Internet or they only have Wi-Fi. And, you know, Wi-Fi is problematic and you shouldn't really, be, shouldn't really be using it. So it's always good to have at least a backup. If not, you can, you can actually use this as a primary source of Internet as well. So uh, before I get into the details, let me kind of talk about some of the other devices that, that we use. And I did some very ex exhaustive performance testing on those. And I'll reveal at the end of this video which of these is the fastest um, based on my testing. So let's take a look at a, a couple other options here. So the first one that most people have, their cell phone. You know, most, most of our cell phones actually do have hotspot capability. So you put it, turn on the hotspot feature and then you're able to connect over Wi-Fi, uh, a computer or a streaming device or whatever. Um, and it can work, um, but is that really a great way to go? So again, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Another one that's very closely related is the hotspot. Uh, this, this one is an LTE model it's from ZTE, but these come in all shapes, shapes and sizes from a lot of different manufacturers. Uh, but basically, it's a Wi-Fi access point that uses cellular uh, data in order to provide internet access. Another one we can, we'll talk about here briefly is the USB L LTE modem. So you pop a SIM card in there, plug it in your computer, and you've got internet access. So, so yeah, those, those are kind of some of your more basic options that are out there. There are other variations of, of these products that are out there for sure, but uh, those are kind of your basics. So. And talk about some of the pros and cons uh, of each one of these. So, first of all, um, cell phone. Well, you're tying up a cell phone, right? And not only that, you might have uh, issues with battery life. You know, cell phones are not designed to run all, a lot of data all day long. So, you might kill the battery. And just not a, just not a great... It's kind of inconvenient in order to tie up a cell phone in order to get internet that way. All right, the Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, these are very much like a cell phone. They're essentially doing the same thing as a, a cell phone in in a personal hotspot mode. So, same same kinds of issues. So you might run into battery life issues. Uh, the other pro problem that these have, they only have their internal antenna. So you're not necessarily getting great reception. And in most cases, you're going to want to run those inside because they're not weatherproof. And so you're limited to whatever sort of internet connectivity you get inside of a venue. Same thing, again, with the USB as well. So because of all those reasons and more, I elected to go with this MoFi network device. So it's an LTE router. It actually provides all your internet routing capabilities. So you can basically plug in as many devices as you want. Um, it actually has Wi-Fi built into it too, so that's what, the, that's what these antennas are. So these top two are cellular, these bottom two are Wi-Fi. So it actually provides Wi-Fi for any devices that you want to connect uh, should you need that. But the main reason I got this one in addition to being able to uh, run it all day off of trailer power or whatever is because it actually connects over Ethernet. So that way I can connect desktop computers and in the case of something like this, a Teradek Video, it's got Ethernet there on the back. So can get internet for basically any of the devices that I have, uh, wired or wireless. And when you're in terms of reliability, it's always better to go wired than wireless. So, um, in, 
in addition, this particular device actually supports something that's called carrier aggregation. So what, it's, uh, that's, what that's able to do is to give you more bandwidth by combining multiple radio bands. So by default, like our cell phones and whatnot, they only use one radio band. So in the, in the area that I, I live, in the carrier that I use, uh, and they use bands 2, 4, and 12. And this actually allows you to combine both. So in that way, you're actually able to get a lot more bandwidth than you possibly can out of like a cell phone or a hotspot or even these USB modems. So in addition to the extra reliability, uh, you also get faster speeds. Uh, just a better deal altogether. The other great thing about these is these antennas are removable. And in my trailer, I actually have a few of these, this style antenna, up on the roof in order to make sure that I get really, really good quality coverage. And it absolutely does work. Uh, compared to uh, the cell phone, this, th this thing always gets way better coverage. So it, if my cell phone has only got one bar of service, this this had have, have, have this would have the equivalent of maybe three or four bars. So uh, it's just a lot stronger signal. It's also diversity, so it's got two antennas, so it's able to pick up the signal off of whichever antenna is stronger. So it's able to switch back and forth. So if you're familiar with radio uh, radio signals, there's something called multipath, which is basically where one signal cancels out a reflected signal and you end up with essentially no signal strength at all even though you're in an area that actually has good coverage so by having diversity it's able to overcome that so if one of the antennas is in one of those situations where that signal is being cancelled out the other one will save you and actually you get much more reliable coverage that way so another cool thing about this is you actually can hook up external antennas so if I wanted to use an antenna on the roof I can just disconnect one of these antennas here on the side and grab cable like this one, find the end, and plug that in there. And then on the other end, on the roof, you have this connector, it's called an NMO. And you just take an antenna like this one, pop that on there, and then you're able to get way better coverage than you can with the antenna that's built into like a cell phone. And this antenna is much bigger, so it's able to capture more signal. It's also uh, tuned specifically for cellular, uh, whereas a lot of these cell phones, they have to compromise on the antenna design in order to make them fit inside the phone. But uh, you're able to hook up a couple of these antennas and use the diversity feature of, of the device in order to make sure that you're getting a nice strong signal at all times. Now I've got my Teradek Video Go out here because I wanted to talk a little bit about it, the connectivity with it and some of the similar devices that are out there. So in addition to supporting Ethernet, the device actually supports Wi-Fi as well. And then it also has these USB ports on the sides. There's one on each side. And these can be used with these USB modems. So if I take this, plug it in here, and then I can plug in one on the other side. I'm able to then aggregate the bandwidth from Ethernet, Wi-Fi, and two cellular connections. So I can have, there's actually even, even more capability than that, but you're able to get four internet connections that you can use simultaneously, uh, either for redundancy or for additional bandwidth if you happen to be in an area that doesn't have high-speed coverage. So that's one of the advantages you actually do get with the USB devices. All right, so actually let me give you a brief tour of the device here. So the device on the back has four Ethernet connections for client devices. There's also a WAN port on the back, and if you connect this into another Internet connection, as long as that connection is live, it doesn't use the cellular in this device. So at that point, the cellular actually becomes just a backup instead of the primary Internet connection. So there's also a 12-volt connection on the back, and then on the side we have cellular, cellular antenna, the SIM card, Wi-Fi antenna, and then on the other side, similar. We have a cellular antenna and then a Wi-Fi antenna there as well. So there's some status lights on the front. So we've got power, internet connection, Wi-Fi, uh, WAN, whether the WAN internet connection is active, and then the status of each of your four LANs. And then on the front, there's also a USB port that can be used for storage, and then a micro SD card slot that you can use for shared network storage as well. All right, with that, let's actually take a look at the, the interface a little bit here. And a lot of this is going to be blurred out because there's a lot of like serial numbers and things like that that are, that are kind of sensitive. But 
but you'll, you'll get the idea. So uh, unfortunately, as I'm sitting here, I don't have any coverage at the moment. So ignore the big red, big red slash and this, uh, popping up from time to time. So th this is a very, very comprehensive router. So in addition to seeing all, all these crazy settings about the, the cellular modem, uh, there's also a whole bunch more stuff just as a router as well. But the one that I wanted to, to point out here uh, is uh, the band scanner and the band lock. The band scanner actually lets you see which radio bands your carrier uses in your area. And then you can come into the band lock and actually lock the radio onto one specific band if that one has better performance than the others. And in my testing, I did find that there was a huge variation between different bands. And with all the other devices that I showed you here, here today, you don't have the choice of which radio band you're going to use. So being able to go in here and say, hey, stay, stay on band four guarantees that you're going to have a lot better coverage than somebody else is using a cell phone in order to get internet. In addition to that, I also mentioned that this device has carrier aggregation as well. So through this interface, you're actually able to go and say, I want to, I want to use bands 2 and 12, and then the radio will automatically stick to those two bands and allow you to use the band with the both of those combined. All right, so I mentioned a moment ago that I did some performance testing on these to find out which of these devices is actually the fastest. So let's actually take a look at some of my data. Let me go to... This is a summary of the different devices that I tested. So I've got my MoFi device here. So the first few here is the MoFi Auto, Band 2, Band 4, and Band 12. The MoFi Auto is actually able to use that carrier aggregation feature in order to get additional speed. In these other cases, I'm locking it onto one specific band. So Band 2, Band 4, and Band 12. And then we come a little bit further down, we've got the USB stick, which in my case is a ZTE model. And then I've got my hotspot, it's also ZTE. And then iPhone native is actually how fast the phone is by itself, not being used as a hotspot, just like if you're actually downloading data right on the phone itself. And then I've got the iPhone as a hotspot. Then I used an iPad in both native and hotspot mode. And then I used the Samsung A51 uh, cell phone as well. So on this chart, the download speeds are the ones in blue, the upload speeds are the ones in red, and then the white line here, that's actually ping time, so basically how responsive. And I've inverted the axis on the ping times so that higher on the chart is actually better, whereas normally it would be the other way around. All right, so if we take a look, if upload is what we care about, if we're doing live streaming, upload is going to be the most important factor. If we take a look, that's the red here. So if we look at the red numbers, you can see that my MoFi de device is quite a bit faster than all the other ones. And the worst one by far was the iPhone hotspot, which only, was only able to achieve an average of four megabits upload speed. Come over to the Mo MoFi, average was 23. So 23 megabits is more than enough in order to get pretty much any sort of live stream online. And that just happens to be at this particular location where I don't necessarily have especially great coverage. But the bottom line here is that the MoFi is able to provide a lot more upload bandwidth than all the other devices that I tested. There are some cases where the download speeds on others were faster, but in the case of live streaming, you don't necessarily care about your download speeds. It's the upload speed that's really, that really matters. So if you've found that you're using a hotspot feature of your phone and you're just not getting the speed that you need, probably ought to consider investing in a device like this. It's actually purpose made for routing internet traffic over an ethernet network. And if we look at the actual raw data here, these numbers bear this out. So the average upload speed on my MoFi router was 19.93 megabits per second. All the other devices, the average was 7.28. So it's basically almost three times faster for doing uploads than all the other devices that I tested. Download speeds were a little slower, but still not bad. 17 megabit is plenty to do most of the different sorts of things that you might not necessarily need to do on the internet, even, uh, even streaming video. In terms of ping, the MoFi was slightly faster, but not necessarily any faster that you would actually notice it. So there it is. 
yeah, uh, the MoFi 4500 is the device that I use here in my trailer. I've been very happy with it. It's worked great. I actually use it as a backup internet connection for my office as well. So if my fiber connection ha happens to go down, it automatically fails over to my MoFi. And that has worked just fine. So in terms of which model to get, they have several different ones. So they have some models that are specific for certain carriers, like the big one here in the US is a Verizon. They have a model that's specific for Verizon, but they're, they have another model that works on all the other carriers. Uh, it uses just a standard SIM card and you're able to pop that in and out at will so you don't necessarily have to stick to one particular carrier. If you wanted to have an arsenal of cards for different carriers, you could certainly do that and then when you get to location, swap the different cards in and see which is going to give you the best coverage at any, any given location. They have released a newer version of this. This model is the SIM 4. They have released a newer one. It's called the SIM 7 and it provides more band coverage, particularly in the 600 megahertz band, which is now just starting to come out, but it does lose the carrier aggregation feature. So you're probably going to lose a little bit of, of bandwidth with it compared to the SIM 4. So in any, either case, uh, there are links to both of these in the description down below. So I appreciate you guys using the links to purchase those products. It helps the channel quite a bit. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. We're releasing video production related content multiple times per week, especially with a new series that I'm doing with my friend Wit. It's called the Stream Team, where we start at the, start at the beginning and, and cover all the basics for live streaming. So please tune in and, and watch that with us. So if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments. I'll try, best, I'll try my best to answer those. And also be sure and share this video with your friends. I appreciate any sort of additional coverage and additional sharing that we can get out there for people as well. So anyway, thanks everyone for watching and have a fantastic day.